I'm here from my last name. I am actually uh, Iroquois. I'm Seneca Cayuga Nation, uh, Haudenosaunee from right here. If history was written by the victors, then the future will be written by the vectors. Artificial intelligence will radically change our world, our lives, our planet. It remains to be seen if it will be positive or negative, TBD. It is said that those who fail to study history are doomed to repeat it. And I would add that those who ignore data have underfitted models. When Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin were looking for a new model to serve as the United States government, they were very impressed by the Iroquois Confederacy, Haudenosaunee people of the Longhouse made up of the Seneca Cayuga, Oneida, Onondaga, Mohawk, and Tuscarora. Thomas Jefferson spent a year with the Iroquois in upstate New York in one of their large cities of a very sizable portion of the United States and Canada, their territories. When Jefferson and Franklin and the other founders drafted the Constitution, they cherry-picked the parts that were most beneficial to their political process, the bits that seemed to align the best with their Enlightenment-era ideology, representation, voting, checks and balances. But they left out the societal and cultural networks that sustained these practices in the actual Iroquois Confederacy. So what did they leave out? They left out that the Iroquois Constitution states that women, clan mothers from each tribe, are the only ones who can vote. And the representatives, same, same thing, right? <laughs> and the same representatives, the chiefs, had to only be a man. There was also a balance of power. Only men could serve and only women could vote. Their economy was driven through complex agricultural arrangements. Everyone in the community participated in planting and harvesting, not an economy of slave-dependent plantation agriculture. This is an example of colonial mindset. I see it, I like it, I want it, I take it. But I'm unconcerned with the effect that it will have on the people I take it from. This is like trying to run a program without checking its dependencies. What if it turns out, actually, that the Confederate democracy or lasting peace and prosperity is dependent upon a balance of power along gendered lines or upon a different economic model than the one practiced by European settlers in North America? Or what if the system imagines a system of ag agriculture where the environment is protected and maintains sustainable practices? We all have colonial mindset. No matter who we are, I have it. It's just because our culture it has a colonial mindset. But here's the thing. We're not colonial subjects anymore. We don't live under a colonial empire anymore. In data science, we talk about models suffering from either overfitting or underfitting. Overfitting is when a model exhibits a low degree of bias, but a high degree of variance. In other words, it accepts a lot of difference within the data, but it has very little predictive power. Underfitting, also both of these things are not what you want in your AI model, okay? So underfitting is the inverse of this, has high bias and low variance. This is what happens when you make a generalization about enough data or when the data is not diverse enough to represent the actual world. The big problem with colonial mindset is one of underfitting, e extracting an idea without the context that made it work in the first place. I'm here to say don't colonize our future. Our plans for the future need to include data from diverse cultures and societies, and not only those ideas that flatter what we already think. For instance, let's say you want to lay the groundwork for a society that runs on blockchain. What does it look like? How does it work? What are the consequences? If we don't have significant data, we may have to wing it. But we actually have thousands of years of data about decentralized economies. The use of wampum, I brought a shell with me today. <laughs> this is a wampum. It's turned into beads. And it's used among the Iroquois as a functional, decentralized, distributed ledger of contracts. And it helped us go govern our society for centuries. Wampum is an example of what I've termed an antecedent technology. And there are many more cases like this. In South America, the Inca had a Turing complete system of knot tying called Kipu, which predated modern computing by hundreds of years. When we want to use powerful new technologies, such as AI or blockchain, and we want to use as much as data to help us imagine a positive change in the world, we do not need to throw out thousands of years of data that can fuel the next giant leaps our communities will make with technology. I want people to know that indigenous people had technologies that have solved complex problems. I want us to use their data to help us dream of our future, and I want to believe that just because we have had 500 years of slavery, worker exploitation, pover poverty, and gender imbalance, 
we have also had thousands of years of peace and prosperity and equality right here where I'm standing today. Thank you.